Mir det satt jag så med nya arvanit, kagrechia, sitter i tätti. Men så är Dimitri, är i Novelio, i Belgik, är det jag ga ga grekia, ne kufiri me Turkina, ist nje kjutet, se thon Alexandrupoli, Alexandrupoli ist kasabaja se st me i afer ga fshati im. Fshati im ish tihero. Edhe ashtu. Baben ti me ish te ga tihero. Ga kjo fshati. Edhe mumen mumen si ish te shkiptarke. Ish te nga një kasabaj një kasabaj si kjutet një kjutet që pak me i ljark nga fshati babës. Babën tim ishtë shkiptarke edhe ishtë i gjysëm. Babën tim ishtë shkiptarke edhe ishtë i gjysëm. Atër unë jam i një qejrek, a quarter of arvanit. Ma katë madhi jetë. Alore e shushi. Gjyshi ishtë. I jati i tatës. A i ishtë Arvanit o Shqiptar? Kësht një... It's a big thing. When... When I present... I have to go to English to explain that. When we present ourselves in Greek, we say we are Arvanites. And, for example, I am an Arvanit and he's an Alvanos. So he's Albanian, I'm Arvanit. But when we are in or in the village, um, we don't use like the archaic form like you have Arberesh or in southern Greece they have uh, Arberor. And we say just keep that. So it's a little bit confusing. It's even more confusing for us than for you because yeah. it's just the same as uh, Albanians say for themselves. But if there is an Albanian coming in the village, Um, we would say Jam Shkiptar and the Kyrgyz Alvanos. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> For we say Jam Arbres and Kyrgyz Shkiptar or Albanese. Yeah, like ah. you say Albanese, we say Jam Shkiptar, sepse Jam Shkiptar, Jam Shkiptar and the Kyrgyz Alvanos, sepse ishten ga Albania. Ah, kal Albania, sorry. Uh huh. Ah, like this. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, but so that means your history is a little bit different from the um, Arvanit people from the south of Greece or central Greece. Yes. Um, so as far as I uh, um, have found in sources, etc., the name Shkiptar is like uh, from the 15th to 16th century. Um, and so apparently we are a migration that is after um, uh, after that Albanians uh, call themselves uh, Shkiptar. And so there are three theories for our migration from Al Albania to, to Greece, <clears throat> which is also not the place where we are now. So um, we are a second, th there was a second migration, which was from Turkey to Greece. Like Turkey and Greece had in 1922, uh, they had uh, an exchange of populations. And uh, we were part of the Greek Orthodox population who had to come from Turkey to Greece. Although we didn't spoke Greek, <laughs> um, except of uh, schools, of course, were in Greek. But uh, yeah, the grandmother of my father didn't sp uh, speak Greek at all, for example. And so in that part of Turkey, we came, there are three theories. Um, though not that they are all equivalently uh, good, let's say, but the first one is uh, from Fanoli, uh, who is the biggest one who supports this. Fanoli is a, like a big person in Albanian history. Mm. And he actually, actually comes from my village. And... Um, He says that uh, we are an Albanian, um, a Byzantine colony, actually. Mm. 
uh, soldier colony that uh, Byzantine emperors uh, created. Um, then there is the second, which is, let's say, the theory of uh, Sir Titus Johalas, which is uh, from the uh, Athenian Academy. He says, and this is also a popular version in our uh, villages, that we came like in the 16th, 16th century, like for the building of the Sili, Silimiye Mosque in uh, Edirne. It's a big, big mosque, very popular. Or for the bridge of Uzunkypru. So in that period, uh, that's a little bit after the conquest of Istanbul. And the third theory is uh, after the decline of uh, Moskopolis, which is Voskopoi today in Albania. Um, there were bandits and uh, Ali Pasha, for example, distracted the city also. And apparently with the destruction of the city, we came to Greece uh, or at that part of the Ottoman uh, Empire. So somewhere between Middle Ages and uh, let's say 18th uh, century. So that's a big sure. period, but... Sure, sure. We, we know exactly when our ancestors arrived because there are documents and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and we had emigrations originally from central Albania, from Himara and from uh, the region of Koroni and Nafplio. Um, and yeah, but that's in the Peloponnese, right? Yes, Koroni. in the Peloponnese, yeah. yeah. That's why our song Oe Bukura Morea is so famous because talking about Morea. Um, and near to, near to Nafplio, there is a village called um, Ayos, Ayos Velasis. Okay, something, yeah. Something like this. Velasis, and, yeah. yeah, and the only place in Italy with uh, the surname Ayo Velasit is mm -hmm. in Piana degli Albanese. And, oh, okay. Yeah, and my family are from Santa Cristina Gela, which was founded in 1699 by people from Piana degli Albanese. And there's a surname, Ayo Velasit. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, and if you consider that we have origins also in Nafplio and Koroni, it's really interesting because that's the only place where it could possibly come from is that village, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh -huh. So we, we, yeah. we, we have uh, in, in, in our village, if you go really to old people, they will say, for example, that they come from Cutez. Uh, but Qutez, of course, in Albanian just means village, right? Yeah. Like, uh, or fortified village or something like that. Um, but being from the region of Korch, um, there are two villages which are called Qutez. One is in, in the mountains, is like a really, really small village. And the other, which is a little bit bigger and on the border with Greece, is considered to be uh, originally from that first village so i guess we are from that village but there is no documented like uh, you cannot be sure about that sure. but uh, having uh, having been there like i see that the people speak a little bit more like us but mm -hmm. i guess that's the general general accent of the south you know of course sure so can you speak um arvanitika or what do you call the, what do your family call the language? Uh, in Greek, we say Arvanitika. If we speak in English, we say Arvanitika or Arvanitik or something like that. Um, if we speak in our language, we say Shkip. So just like Albanians say for themselves. <laughs> ah, you don't say Arbrecht? No, 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 at all. So we say Shkip, Shkip it. Um, um, uh, I never learned it from my father or something like that. Uh, my mother, of course, don't speak it. My sister doesn't speak it at all. Um, but I learned the first uh, words from my father and my uh, godfather. Mm. So uh, we had like, uh, my father used to have a Greek restaurant and uh, at some point my godfather came, came from Greece. And here in Belgium, you know, we speak two, we have two, national languages so my yeah. godfather was like speaking to me i was like i don't know six seven years and he says like uh, you're so you're just a kid and you speak already three languages so you speak french you speak dutch and you speak greek 
uh, was like, yes, what languages do you speak? And he was like, I, okay, I speak Italian, I speak German, I speak Greek. Uh, my father was saying I speak French, Spanish, and Greek. And then my godfather said to my father, like, I think you forgot one language. Oh, yes, what is that? And he says, like, Arvanitica. And ha, 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 they're like laughing, like, like uh, how, how to say that to you? It was like, they didn't consider it a language. Mm. And um, I was, I was, however, like wanted to know what this is about. And uh, they told me, no, just the language that we speak in the village. And so I took a piece of paper and I wrote like uh, five or 10 words. And now I'm 31. So from that point, I just hear left and right and I uh, write uh, words down and uh, just practicing. Of course, at some point, you understand that it's uh, really, really similar to Albanian. Mm. And uh, I also had a very good Albanian friend uh, in uh, my classroom at the Belgian school. And uh, also the ironic part of it is that his name is Arber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, yes, a little bit with, uh, with friends, with family. When I go to the village, I try to speak it at um as much as possible but it's really difficult because like if um the person is not older than let's say 50 years old he can not uh speak it mm. and uh, especially the people of my age and um lower cannot speak it at all it's just limited uh limited to some words, some generally expressions, but they just put that into Greek. So it's not that they speak uh, Arvanitica. But if you speak with elder people, you can just have a whole conversation uh, in Arvanitica, of course, with a lot of Greek words. And uh, that's it. Sure. Um, in our village, um, if both parents, now nowadays it's the case that if both parents are from the village or or from either one of the two villages that are only four kilometers away from each other, then the children speak it. Even, mm -hmm. even now toddlers, they, their first language is still Arborish. Um, in some cases, if one of the parents is an Italian or Sicilian speaker, then they don't, they don't speak it. Um, but before that wasn't the case. Before it used to be that if somebody moved into the village, they, they learned the language and their children learned it. Yeah. Um, and I think going back for 300 years when our village was founded, um, it was the case that they always married Sicilian speakers. And so mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was very much the case that we kept our language despite marrying, marrying out, to use uh, a, a funny term. Well, um, so my, it's, fa uh, yeah. <laughs> my father is actually an example of that because he, uh, his mother is also uh, not Arvanitica speaker but he had to learn the language to be able to communicate with, with his grandmother. So he didn't speak it actually at home with his father nor uh, with his mother. Of course, when we say home, at that time, grandmothers were living in the same home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So he had to learn it and um, uh, to speak with his grandmother. And consequently, he used it also to speak with other kids who were more used to to speak it and so he elaborated a little bit more the language mm. and i i think that uh when we first spoke um before we did zoom you you mentioned having seen ha having heard me talk in a video about having a book in albanian that i got from the library when i was a child and i went to my grandfather and i saw the um because it was writing it was from the 80s actually we're talking about like 89 or something um and it was still communist albania then so there was okay. one one book in existence like <laughs> outside of albania and i found it and uh, i saw the numbers and i was reading it and i sat down and my grandfather he didn't know anything about albania didn't have yeah. any nothing just sort of knew that we came from there at one point but he doesn't know anything about it same, um, same yeah, on this side. Exactly. They don't have any knowledge of Albania. And then I was reading the numbers and I was seeing how is it written in Albanian. And I knew the numbers in Albanish, but he was correcting me. So when I was reading, I was like, Nia, du, tre, 
Carter, Pest, Josh. And he said uh -huh. to me, Yo, yo, Nathan, me, Nia, D, Tre, Katr, Pest, Josh. Josh, yeah. Josh. And, uh -huh. so, and so I started to learn the differences reading that book. And things like the word ha um, half, ours is Gimse. Uh huh. Um, and in Albanian, it's Jusem. And Jusem, so, I, yeah. yeah. We 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 use the same as uh, it's half 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 uh, yours and half Albanian. We say gusme, so we say the g, but we say u. We still have the u that ah, okay. was uh, like yotakized. Uh, I think you call that uh, in uh, in Arbresh mm -hmm. and in uh, Arvanitica of the south also. Uh huh. We don't have it. Uh huh. Oh, yes. So we say ni du tre quatre pes jast jast similar. Yeah. Rico, Rico, es de Rico, son de Rico.